Top Six Sunday. It doesn't happen every Sunday, so enjoy it while you can. Where do my sleeves go? Jeez Louise. Welcome to the Greatest Smelling Channel on YouTube. My name is James from J Royal, and we're gonna talk about six fragrances, spoiler alert, seven, that I think are great. And for one specific reason, all of these fragrances are clones. Shudder. Clones of colognes are a very polarizing topic in the fragrance world, mainly because people have differing opinions, obviously. On one end, you have the people that are like, wow, this is great. I have a relatively low cost option that is quite comparable to a much more expensive, hard to find, maybe discontinued fragrance that I would have to spend a lot of money to get. But there's companies out there that just make copies of these fragrances that are hard for the average Joe to get. My personal opinion, not that it matters, but I'll provide it to you anyway. Personally, I think it's all about supply and demand. If there's enough demand for something, and there's no one supplying it, that's just silly. So if people are buying it, then there's obviously a need for it. I also do feel that, well, you know, you're kind of taking away from the creativity of others, but you don't necessarily know how those other people came up with those fragrances. Maybe they're just low key cloning something else that you don't even know about. <laughs> the point is, what I do know is a lot of people like clones. So I've gathered seven that I've been wearing recently that I really like. And in 2020, these are probably my six slash seven favorite clones of fragrances. They're all relatively affordable for the most part, especially compared to their original fragrance. And they all smell really good and they don't smell cheap, which is a huge thing for me. My honorable mention, which is also my number seven fragrance, is Eau La Rouge. If you saw my recent video with Leslie, we did a first impression of this, so you can watch that now if you don't wanna spoil what I think of this fragrance. But overall, it essentially is, whether it's intending to be or not, a Baccarat Rouge 540 clone. Not the most cloned niche fragrance out there, but there are some that exist. The first one that I smelt was by Parfums Vintage and I, I gave it to Leslie. The fragrance is called Sunset in Heaven. She really liked it, I also really liked it and I got compliments while wearing it. But I'm gonna give the slight edge to this one and I'll tell you why. A, recency bias. It's newer, so it's a little more exciting for me to have. Also, the presentation is more interesting to me, but mainly it's a price thing. And it isn't a huge difference, to be honest. This one's about 90 to $100 Canadian when compared to the Parfums Vintage alternative, which is more expensive. It's comparable to that in US dollars, which has a way higher value than the Canadian dollar. Sorry about it. And it also comes with cool lip gloss slash lipstick, which I did put on. So from a value standpoint, especially considering for about a hundred bucks, you get a hundred mil bottle when you might have to spend like 120 Canadian to get the 50 mil bottle in Parkham's Vintage, so. So it just misses my official top six because it's not a fragrance that I would personally wear a ton. I know Leslie will and she is wearing this one already, so. For women, hey, this is probably your number one choice on this list. But for my dudes watching, stay tuned because we've got some good stuff coming. So to start this official list, we have my first Parfums Vintage fragrance. Surprise, surprise. And it's a brand new one that I just got. It's called Interfuse. Fusion. Ha! If you know where that's from, comment below, yo. <laughs> Come in, man, guys. So Interfuse is a combination of two fragrances by Parfums Vintage slash by Rojadov and Creed. You're basically getting a Eurolfa Elysium combo. Two fragrances that start with the letter E, but they're also really, really good for the summer. You have a fresh, fruity, salt water type of fragrance that smells really, really good in the air. And why I put it on this list is because the original versions of what this is cloning are just two that I almost wanted to keep, but I never really felt it was worth it. Because with Eurofa, it has so many similarities to Millicene Imperial, except maybe less fruitiness. And then you have Elysium, which is really great, but it's Roja Duff pricing, so it's hard to find it discounted. And there's already some great clones out there that were really a fraction of the price. Namely, the clone by Alexandria Fragrances, which is phenomenal performance-wise, just not quite as bright off the top. 
But here you have a best of both worlds situation where it's kind of like the super version of a Millicium Imperial because it's salty, but it has the fruits from Elysium, which is a super compliment getting fragrance. To be transparent, I haven't done a ton of testing on this one yet, but my first impressions have been phenomenal. I really, really, really love wearing this in the heat. It's just one you can't really overspray. It's amazing, so. But enough about this, let's go to another fragrance right now. Next up on this list is the best clone of one of the best mainstream men's fragrances out today, Dior Sauvage, and it is by Armoff, and it's called Ventana. Carlos Ventana. <laughs> It's the same and the emotion they don't get from you. So before trying this, I thought I smelled all the great Sauvage clones out there. But then I smelled this and I realized this is the best one. A lot of people online just label this as a spitting image of Sauvage. And for the most part, it is. Performance wise, especially compared to the bottle of Sauvage that I have, is maybe a little bit less on the projection side of things. But smell-wise and longevity-wise, Ventana kills it. Considering you're spending a third of the price that you would for the original fragrance, if you don't care about brand loyalty, just get this. It is absolutely phenomenal. Huge compliment getter, obviously, considering it's cloning Sauvage. Presentation is decent. I would say the best part of this bottle are the parts that you don't really see head-on, the sides. It's kind of this pleather type of action. But then you have like sort of this plastic that's trying to be metal and this sort of soft touch plastic, which is, I guess, all right. But it's about the juice inside. And honestly, it's really good. Like a lot of our moths, there is a bit of an alcohol smell right off the top. So just let that die down for a second. It's gone after like 10 seconds. And then you have an amazing fragrance that you can uh, pick up chicks with or dudes if you roll like that. Next up, we have a fragrance that I don't actually have the original version of, and I never have owned it, which is kind of why I like it so much. It's by Parfums Vintage, again, and it's called Zeno. What's interesting about this one, similar to Interfuse, is it is not just a clone of one fragrance, it's a clone of two fragrances blended together. What you have is by Killian Straight to Heaven Extreme, mixed with Baccarat Rouge 540, Deja vu, we already talked about that one. <laughs> and this isn't the first time that Parfums Vintage has used Baccarat Rouge as part of another clone combination kind of thing. They also did it with Siage of Unicorns, which I really like as well. Because Baccarat Rouge isn't a very overly strong fragrance, especially compared to Straight to Heaven, it really just sits in the background. So I get more of the by Killian here, which is amazing. It's boozy, it's mysterious, it's seductive, and this is slowly becoming one of Leslie's signature scents. So I thought this was masculine, to be honest, even though it's marketed as unisex, but it really, really gravitates towards Leslie. And she likes, you know, your sweet, spicy, floral, fruity fragrances, but for some reason, when she put this on, she was in love. So it is one of those fragrances that is just so unique and different, being a clone fragrance, that's kind of ironic, but it is. It really is a special fragrance that will work perfectly on certain people. It's not one of your mass market fragrances, and just because she wears it doesn't mean you can't wear it as a dude, because you can. A lot of dudes love this DNA. And just because it has that touch of the Kirk John fragrance, it makes it a little bit different. So it's worth checking out for sure, especially if you love boozy fragrances. This next fragrance is a big shout out to my boy, Justin. He's actually one of my moderators on my Facebook group and I've known him for a while, at least online. He sent me these a while ago and I haven't talked about them yet. So now is a perfect chance to do that. It is a fragrance called Lad and it's a clone of one of my favorite Chanel fragrances, Boy. It is an Eau de Parfum by Genre Parfums, and there it is, it's called Lad. It's a cute little bottle here. What's great about this one in particular is the fact that it's cloning Boy. <laughs> it's not a fragrance that you would think, oh yeah, this needs to be cloned because so many people are wearing Boy. Not really. Yes, it's kind of new, but it really is a niche fragrance by all accounts. It has a very unique feel to it. It's so unisex that it's really hard to determine whether it is for men or women, and it's not even a bestseller. Yet, 
Joana Parfums recognize that there are people, like myself, that really, really like that fragrance. I'm just gonna pull that drawstring out. Maybe they don't wanna spend the crazy prices that you gotta spend on that fragrance, especially if you're getting a larger presentation size. Side by side, slight differences in the air, you can't even tell the difference, really. And the beautiful thing about this company is the price point. It is gonna be more affordable than the Parfums Vintages out there. Maybe not as much as the Armoffs, but quality-wise, this is a step up from Armoff, for sure. So if this hasn't been on your radar, if you do like clones, if you like those high-value propositions with your fragrances, please check out Genre Parfums. And if you wanna know more about them, comment below, because I have some samples that I'm dying to share with you guys on camera. We are down to our final two. You just probably saw it. This wouldn't be a clone list if it didn't include clones of the king of men's fragrances. So the first one I wanna talk about is my value pick of the entire list. And it is Club De Nuit Intense Man. Doesn't really matter what version you get, but currently I am loving the Parfum Oil version. And the reason for that is it doesn't have alcohol in it, so it doesn't have that signature Armoff sort of cheap alcohol opening that smells a bit like, like rubbing alcohol. Of course, once the fragrance dries down, that dies, and then you just are left with the dry down, which is amazing. What made Aventus famous was the pineapple, the musk, the woodiness, the bit of vanilla, the birch tar, all that stuff. This doesn't really have a lot of that. It just kind of feels like it's in the same category but instead of pineapple, it uses black currant. If you are familiar with perfume oils, it is a little different the way you apply it. You're not spraying it on, you're actually getting a little stick and sort of swiping. But the overall enjoyment factor is much higher for me especially. Right from the opening, this smells like Club de Nuit. It lasts a long time, doesn't project a ton, but it'll linger with you and you'll smell great. If you want something in a more traditional cologne bottle, then there's also the just regular spray version, which you can just spray on and you're good to go, dude. Just be aware that don't leave the house just after spraying it. Maybe wait like five, 10 minutes, let it settle in and then you're good. But as great as that fragrance is and as good of a value proposition as our moth is, it's not my favorite clone right now. This year, I have been blown away by one particular fragrance from a company that you're all familiar with, I think. It's Parfums Vintage. Surprise, surprise. I've been a huge fan of their Pineapple Vintage line big time. One of their first releases was Pineapple Vintage Noir, and I always stamped that as my favorite. It smelled amazing. I got a ton of compliments wearing it. Over a month, I had quite possibly 15 compliments. It was insane because I wore it every day. I'm here to say that it's been dethroned. It's been dethroned by another Parfums Vintage fragrance, trying to be Aventus, but sort of providing its own slight little spin to it. This one amps up the fruitiness. It is a fruity powerhouse. It is a pineapple bomb fragrance. So if that sounds like something you're into, then you really, really owe it to yourself to check out Parfums Vintage Intense The One. I've had this one for a while now, and I've been really just trying to wait for the perfect opportunity to share my thoughts on this. It's so good. If you like the fruity aspect of Pineapple Vintage, this is that on steroids. So not only will it last a ton of time, it'll definitely last you the day. It's that sweet pineapple fruitiness that will linger rather than other fragrances or other clones that sort of have that niceness kind of early on and then it just develops into something more generic or maybe a bit woody. This is an unapologetic pineapple bomb, which I am obsessed with. I think it's the best smelling pineapple vintage fragrance there is at this point, and it has forced me to downsize some of my some of my Aventus clones that I've accumulated over the years. I still have a few others that kind of serve their own purpose, but overall, this is my favorite clone to date. Now, if possible, guys, let's keep politics out of the comments. So if you hate clones, then that's fine. But really what I hope to get from this video is, what are your thoughts on your favorite clones out there? If there are some that I didn't mention, share them down below because we don't all have to agree, but at least we can share information, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, that's the end of the video, bye! Bye, Leslie. <laughs>